Hey, how's it going? This is Dave from the Adobe Character Animator team and welcome to the August edition of Tips and Tricks. Today we'll start off with the Community Spotlight showcasing a very cool frame-by-frame -frame complete body swap animation uh, that a user sent in, as well as a new way to stream on your PC. Then I'll do a quick review of the Elgato Stream Deck. This little device allows you to create little custom keyboard triggers. Uh, it's great for live uh, animation and so uh, I'll show you the process of how I went about doing that. Then we'll finish up with a recap of San Diego Comic-Con. Uh, last month I was there and did a few panels and demos and uh, we'll walk through a demo character uh, that I made for that show and kind of walk through some of the effects and how I put them together. So uh, let's get started. So this is a great character sent to us uh, by a company named Uno Mono, uh, specifically an animator called Adil Khanna. And what I love about this character is how well they're using frame by frame animations to uh, swap things in with key triggers. So when I press Q or W or R, it does these little hand motions that are all kind of hand drawn and, and added in and it really adds a nice effect. Including if I press E, he kind of does this little head nod. And it's nice, right now I'm holding down E and it's not tracking my eyes or mouth or anything like that, but it is a nice little thing to kind of break up the monotony of the head always looking like this. Um, now he also added some really cool ones that replaced the whole body. So this one G jumps up there and does a kind of rock and roll uh, hanging out thing. And then finally Kaboom, which uh, does that animation. So how do you do something like this? Let's go into rig mode and find out. So you can see from this master image that there's a lot of other things he does. His head gets on fire, he gets a cyclops visor, uh, he uh, turns into a bat or bird uh, body. Lots of different things he's fooling around with here. But the main thing to look at here is here's the main character folder. Um, and normally, right, you've got your head and your body inside of there, but then he's also got goth, which is the one where he jumps up and does the rock and roll symbol, and kaboom, where it kind of explodes. And these both have key triggers associated with them, and if you open them up, they are just frame-by-frame -frame sequences that have had uh, the cycle layers behavior added to them over here, and they also have hide others in group checked, meaning when goth is pressed, body and headmaster are both going to disappear and goth is going to replace them. And so you just kind of look at, okay, where's the, if I double click, I'll go into this a little bit uh, quicker. And you can see the first frame is essentially just a static version of uh, what the guy would look like in his rest position. And then when I move on to two, there's slight movement happening and some more with the arms and then this one, you know, if you look at it by itself, it looks a little rough. It looks different in quality um, from three. But uh, as you keep going, this is every frame of the animation. And it happens so fast. I mean, this is happening at 24 frames per second that I think it works really well. So these guys uh, obviously know what they're doing. And it's a nice effect um, when it's all put together. So you can kind of see how these frames all together create that nice sequence. Anyway, this is a great example of marrying frame by frame animation with performance capture and then adding all the different motions to really help bring a character to life in interesting new ways. If you're looking to stream character animator stuff using your PC, you may want to look into vMix. Uh, so the guys at Look Studios uh, in the UK, Digital Puppets, these guys have started doing some weekly live streams. And the most recent one they did, they actually ran it using vMix. So in the past, we've talked about OBS, Open Broadcaster Studio, um, as well as Wirecast as ways to stream. Now, this is for PC users, a third option, vMix. And uh, it uses NDI, so it will work with the the latest version of Character Animator, and you can have multiple characters on the screen, things in the background, screen sharing, all of that stuff. Um, I definitely recommend looking at their video, and they go through a nice little walkthrough and tutorial of how they set everything up. It can get a little complicated, um, so it's worth uh, kind of seeing how they do things. But overall, it's great to see yet another uh, solution for doing live streaming with Character Animator. A tool I've been fooling around with a lot recently is the Elgato Stream Deck. So this is a nice little piece of uh, hardware that allows you to create custom 
triggers. Uh, and this is great for a character animator puppet. If you've ever been like me and you've put little pieces of paper on your keyboard to remember what the Q key does or T key or one key or whatever, um, this is a much better alternative. Um, so I'll show you how it kind of works. Uh, so I've got my character here and when I press the T key, he does this heart animation. So I wanna set a trigger for that in Stream Deck. So you download this interface from their website, very easy to do. Uh, I'm going to select this middle icon um, that I haven't added anything to yet and I'm going to just go to hotkey and drag that in and double click on the image uh, and that's going to bring up this file dialog and I made these custom thumbnails in Photoshop. You can you know, use whatever you want. Click open and that's going to make the heart icon appear. And since I know that's triggered by T, I'm going to click uh, hotkey. It says observing keystrokes and then I'll press T to make that assigned to that particular thing. And now, notice on my interface, uh, the heart is showing up in the middle there. And so when I want that heart animation to appear, I just press the heart button and it automatically starts happening. Or if I want his head to open, I press the head open icon. Or if I want uh, his weapon to appear and shoot fire out or lightning, I have the ability to do that. So for live streaming animation, I would highly recommend this. It works really well. It's very customizable. You can even do folders and several layers deep. So you've, you had more than the 15 that are here. You could tap something to get to a secondary set of triggers and be able to use those as well. Um, so I think for live streaming, this is a great investment. Um, it certainly makes things a lot easier uh, and will save you on taping little pieces of paper to your keyboard. Last month, I was lucky enough to attend San Diego Comic-Con. Uh, I went with Dan and Erica and Michelle on the character animator team, and we were joined by several people from the Adobe Photoshop team. Adobe had a booth there, and it was an awesome experience. It was so great to meet uh, tons of people, uh, all dressed up in you know, all sorts of different costumes, and a lot of people who have used character animator before. It was really nice to connect and meet a lot of you out there, so thanks for stopping by and saying hi. Uh, we did a few panels where uh, we talked about the ins and outs of Character Animator, including one with David Miller, who has actually made some motion comics with Character Animator, and that was a really successful event. And then uh, at the booth, we just did a lot of demos where we kind of showed off a bunch of our demo characters and how to stream and you know how it's been used on The Simpsons and Late Show with Stephen Colbert and that sort of stuff. In addition, Character Animator was used to do some live Q&A uh, in some of the bigger panels at Comic-Con. So Bart Simpson uh, was up there and answered fan questions uh, as a live animated character, which was great. And then Sterling Archer from Archer on FX uh, also answered some questions uh, live. Uh, so it was really cool to see these kind of uh, live events and character animator being used to uh, have fans actually interact with these uh, animated characters. So for Comic-Con, I created this new free example character, and you can download her and check her out at the OK Samurai Puppets page, uh, where I've kept all my free puppets from these videos. And there, she does a few cool things. So first, she's got the dangling hair and cape, and uh, in the demos, I was showing how you can add a wind effect to that cape to get it nice and you know moving in the wind, and that's, that's kind of a cool effect. Um, but then you can also do a few other things with her. If I press the F key, she raises her hand up and has a looping fire animation, and she has this nice lighting effect on her as well. And then if I press it again, it goes down. And then the other hand is draggable, and if I press G, the, key, uh, the hand opens up and she shoots out fire. So I want to go over two things in a little more depth. Number one, how to do an easy arm frame by frame arm animation. So instead of having to draw this four times, I use the puppet warp tool in Photoshop and I'll show you how I went about doing that. And then secondly, how do I get these glow effects on her head and her body uh, when I'm doing these flame animations? And I'll show you how I went about doing that as well. So let's jump into Photoshop first. Okay, so in our right arm group here, we've got a default arm, and that's just what shows up when nothing else is happening or nothing's being pressed. And then a cycle up group, which is a three frame animation of the arm moving up. Now the nice thing is I only had to draw this arm once and I used the puppet warp tool to bend it and manipulate it to make it look like it was bending and rising up. So I'm gonna delete this cycle up group just to show you what I mean. So let's press Command J on Mac, that's Control J on Windows to duplicate this layer and press uh, rename that to two. And all I'm going to do is go up to Edit, Puppet Warp, 
and that kind of gives it something similar to the show mesh toggle inside character animator. It kind of divides it up into these triangles. And what you can do is uh, put click where you want the different bend points to be. So I'm going to do one right here at the shoulder, right here at the elbow, and right here around the wrist. And once that's done, I can actually drag where those are to change and kind of bend the artwork to go into a different position. So normally what I'll do is I'll kind of start with where the extreme position is. So something like that. That's where I want it to eventually end up. Now for this one, I also did a palm flip. So I think I used the polygonal lasso tool and just cut this hand out like this, uh, pressed command X to get rid of it, command V to bring it back, uh, command T to give it free transform, flip it around, drag it, something like that. I also think I, I kind of smoothed it out probably with the eraser or something like that to make it look like it lined up a little bit better and smoother, but you get the general idea. That's one way to do it. Um, and then I would merge these two layers together so they're a single frame. So I would select both of these layers over here and press Command E on a Mac, Control E on Windows to put them together into one frame. Now, the nice thing about that is now I've kind of got my first and last frame and I can fill in the middle details. So I might do something like Command J a couple more times and maybe call this one, two, and three, and then fill in the remaining parts using Puppet Warp. So maybe I'll go back to Puppet Warp here for number one and do something very similar to what I just did, but just bend it a little bit for this one and hit enter and that's looking good. And then finally for two, I would go to edit, puppet warp, exact same thing and bend that up as well. And so really that's all there is to it. You could add then a cycle layers behavior to this and have it hold on the last layer to keep that arm raised up. Um, so this is a great way to have key triggered frame by frame animations. If you wanted your character's uh, arms to both throw up in the air or point at someone or put the hands on the hips or something like that, check out the puppet warp tool because it's a really easy way to get from uh, point A to point B and uh, only have to draw things once. The other thing I wanted to talk about uh, were the lighting effects that are happening on her when you press the F key. And all I did was create a really simple two frame group here, flame cycle, that's got yellow and then it kind of grows a little bit bigger. And I just really quickly go between the two um, using the cycle layers animation here. Now this is inside the head group, but also uh, there's one inside the body group that's doing the same sort of thing. And so for the flickering fire, this two frame animation works really well, right? It just keeps on going back and forth and looks like it's kind of glowing and that works pretty well. For the uh, the flamethrower, I kind of have it illuminate and die down um, as a kind of a nine frame animated sequence. So you'll see this one goes like this where it goes, um, starts up and keeps building up and building up and building up and then eventually starts to die off and go back down and loop back to uh, nothing. And that matched up pretty well with the frames of the flamethrower animation. So for the looping fire animation, uh, I've got three things that are triggered by the F key over here. The cycle up of the arm uh, moving up to show the, the flame inside of it, as well as the body uh, flame effect and the head flame effect. And all of these have the cycle layers behavior added to them. Now, one uh, helpful thing to notice is for the uh, glow effects, I did change the blending mode to linear dodge add, and that gives it a really nice glow effect. In fact, I think all the fire effects, I added that add mode um, to give it a nice glow. So if you have special effects like this with your character, it may make sense to add highlights or shadows or other nice effects. It really helps sell the effect uh, of what's happening, um, You know, some sort of colored glow to them. Um, I could have also made their shadows a little bit more pronounced as well. Um, you know, So there's a lot of possibilities here. So don't just think of the one effect animation as being everything. Think about how that influences the rest of your character's figure and body and uh, what sort of little tricks, even a two frame simple animation animation uh, can go a long way to making an effect feel believable. All right, that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. And one note, if you're going to be in Los Angeles between August 23rd through the 25th, please stop by Adobe Video World. I'll be doing a couple of sessions on Character Animator there, a beginner session as well as an advanced session. Uh, so we'd love to see you there. Other than that, if you have any questions, concerns, bug reports, issues, puppets, heads are falling off, that sort of thing, Best place to get help is the official Adobe Character Animator forums. Uh, we'd be happy to help you out. That's it for this month. Thanks very much for watching and have fun.